This is to show how to make these little nests for the rescue crafters. You can find the link to the Facebook group which has the pattern in the description. So the most important thing for the nests is that the stitches are really really tight because if there's any holes they can get you know claws or talons stuck in them and get injured. The pattern called for a size H hook, 5 millimeter, but for me I found that I had a few holes in it when I did it in that size so I actually went down to an F hook which is 3.75 millimeter. We're going to work two st strands of yarn together as if we're working one strand. It's easier to work from two balls or two skeins then working from each end of the skein would most likely become a big tangled mess as I'm sure you've all experienced. Okay so we start with a magic ring. You bring the yarn around two fingers, wrap it around so that it's on top of that first strand there and you're going to just pull that through. Now this gets a little bit tricky. You're going to want to hold the magic ring with these two fingers so that it doesn't come undone. That pull through and then chain one does not count as a stitch. That just anchors the magic ring. So now we're going to do six single crochet into right into the ring. One. And it's a little tricky working with two strands. You have to make sure that you get both strands in every stitch and that you go through both strands in every previous stitch. So one right into the circle two, three, four, sometimes it helps if you go through one loop and then through the second loop. And if you let, lose track, you can always just count again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we've got six single crochet going through our magic ring. Now you pull it and it'll pull it closed. I know it doesn't look like a ring yet but it will become one I promise. So now we're going to start on the second row and the way this pattern goes is it's worked in spirals so you don't join at the end of every row. So in order to keep track of this first stitch in every row I will often just use a contrasting piece of scrap yarn. So you go into the very first of our single crochet in our magic ring and you have to make sure to go through both sides of the V and both strands of yarn on both sides. And you pull through one and single crochet and you're going to do two of those, two single crochets into each stitch. So you go right back to 
sometimes it helps when you're working with two strands to turn it over as you're pushing your hook in so that you can make sure you're going into the right place. Two, and then now I keep a separate hook. You can use the same hook, which I often do also. You want to go back into that first stitch of this new row just to pull your marking yarn through. Okay, so there's one, two, then we go to the next stitch and do two single crochet in that stitch as well. One and two. And then we do that all the way around through all of the six stitches in the magic ring and then we'll have 12 stitches. As you can see I've got my marking yarn here and so I'm going to stop when I get to the stitch right before it. I'll do these few stitches and get back to you on the last stitch. <coughs> Okay, so now I've done 10 single crochet in this round so far. And you can see that the marking yarn is marking this stitch. So we're going to do two single crochet into that last stitch in the previous round. One. And... Two. Now comes the fun part. You can see that that magic ring is opening up a little bit. So if you take the tail yarn, the two strands of the tail yarn, and you're going to pull it really hard, as hard as you can, and then that should stay closed like that. So when working in rounds it, to make a circle, it's single crochet in every stitch. The only number that will change is every so many stitches, you'll do two single crochet into one stitch. So for the next row, you do a single crochet in the first stitch. and two single crochet in the next stitch. You want to make sure that you only get the top of that stitch. One and two. Sorry. Then go back to the first stitch of this round and you can either use a stitch marker or a marking yarn, whatever is easiest for you. So one, two, one. I'm going to just pull that marking yarn through. There you go. So then we'll continue this round, which will be one single crochet, two single crochets. In this round, the two single crochets into one stitch will be every second stitch. So one, two.
And working with two strands, you'll often find that you have to redo a stitch. Sometimes it just gets caught funny when you're trying to pull it through. So, one, two. So I'll get to the end of this round and I'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, so now as you can see, I've gone back to the marking thread. So there's, there should be 18 stitches in this round. Now for the next round, because we go up one number each time for the two single crochets into one stitch, it will be every third. So one, two, these are single crochets in each stitch, two, and then the third will do two single crochets into that stitch. And then continue on like that. And then at the end of that round, there should be 24 stitches. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna pull my marking yarn through here. So now we've finished that row and you'll see this chart for the various sizes. According to the chart, if you have a base round number of four, it should be 2.25 inches in diameter. So let's check if that's right. Now mine appears to be a little bit smaller, only two inches. But I think that if I do another round, it's going to be too big. So I'm just going to continue with this one here. Depending on how big you want your base to be will be the number of rounds and increases that you do. When you do two single crochet into one stitch, that's also called an increase. So this shows the base of another nest that I'm working on. Uh, this one's a little bigger. So for on the last row, I increased every ninth stitch. But I'm going to go ahead and use this one to show you the next step. Once you get your base as big as you want it, they suggest to do a slip stitch in the next stitch just to kind of reduce the bump that comes from working in rounds. Okay. Then you're going to single crochet all the way around, but in the back loop only. So you'll see when you look at the top, it's like a bunch of V's. So one side of the V is what's called the back loop. Hope you can see that okay. So you stick it just through the two strands. You still have to make sure to get both strands of the back loop only. And then single crochet is normal. So instead of where normally you would stick it in the stitch under both V's, 
you're sticking it in the middle and only getting the back loop of that V. So stick it in the middle and get the back loop. And what this does, you'll see it's starting to form a little ridge there. And that just helps the sides to go up straighter so that it's a little more stable. So I'm going to finish this round and be back in a minute. So now you can see I've done a single crochet in the back loop only all the way around. Now it's not going to match exactly because this is worked in a spiral. The only way it would match exactly is if you were to join with a slip stitch at the end of each round, but the pattern says to do it in a spiral. So, But it's still going to give a lot of stability. So you can see there's my last there's my last single crochet in the back loop only. And then they suggest again doing a slip stitch in the next stitch. So you just pull through and pull right through again. To make a slip stitch. Okay. Now, so basically, the rest of the pattern is very easy. You just do a single crochet in every stitch around, working in spirals, so just around and around and around until you reach the desired height. Remember to check the chart. And the pattern suggests to end it with an invisible finish, which they have a link for a video, a very good video on that. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope that was easy to understand. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Also, this is the first time I've ever made a video, so if you have any suggestions, those would also be appreciated. I've discovered in the group that many people are learning to crochet for the very first time to help with the rescue efforts. So I'm also planning to make videos on how to crochet for super beginners. Once again, you'll find the links for the Facebook group in the description below. Thank you very much.